everyone. This is Sharon and Jamie. Hello. From Sharon at Sea, and we are here today with... Here's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> Behind the fun. <laughs> and finally, this is our um, last video from the Carnival Breeze from when we went um, in October. Oh no, this is the last of the Breeze it, collection? It is. It's the very last. Finally, we've been... It's very sad gonna try and do this vlog for a while now and we've we're anyways so we are gonna tell you a little bit about what we did on the behind the fun tour what it's all about um, you know how much it costs what all you get to see everything we could not videotape it because cameras and cell phones were not allowed um, so but we're gonna tell you all about what we saw and then we do have a few pictures that we'll put at the end as a slideshow for you so, hold, on, hold on. You just said you're not allowed to have pictures. Well, we have a few pictures. We'll put them in. Oh, so, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Hope I don't get any trouble. <laughs> Anyways, so with that being said. Hold on. I got to take this. All right. This is a cool little hat, but unfortunately, this small hat and this big noggin don't go together <laughs> too well. So um, you'll excuse oh, me if okay. I take it off. All right. So All right, first well, hold off. On. So first off, let's start with this. All right. The Behind the Fun Tour, one of the most popular excursions Carnival offers and it's actually on the ship. Mm -hmm. It's something you have to book on the ship and it's a full tour of all the behind the scenes stuff that everyone wants to know about um, on the Carnival yeah. ship. And I think they have it on every ship. They do. Yeah. Some of the larger <coughs> ships will do two um, separate ones and the smaller ships I think just do one. Yeah. It is 95, well, the larger ships it's $95. Um, I've heard it's a little less on some of the smaller ships mm -hmm. but I, I don't know that for sure. But we yeah. paid $95 a person. Um, for ours on the breeze and they take you through all the different areas and explain everything to you and show you so many different things so today we're going to kind of take you through every area that we saw and tell you some of the cool things that we got to see and mm -hmm. how things work on the ship and just some stuff that there's things we didn't really know yeah. or people wonder how they really do that and mm -hmm. things so yeah for sure and the, and the first thing to know is you this books up quickly oh, yeah like like Sharon said, there may only be 16 or 32 spots, depending on how big a ship and what ship you are, and you need to get on that ship and immediately get to right. the excursion desk and get this booked. We went there. That was our first stop as soon as we got on the ship, and we just just barely made it. We yeah, made it. and I mean, like, and we're like literally one of the first, probably like 40 people on the ship, you know, because yeah. uh, we get on as early as we can, and that's our usual move, and I got on. And Sharon was just pushing me saying, go, go, go. And so I got over to the desk and barely squeezed into the tour. So right. get in early. Don't yeah. delay. Now, one thing that I said, the, little, the rules that apply, you know, besides the no cell phones, no cameras, is you must wear closed-toed shoes. Now, we didn't realize that beforehand. So this was one cruise that I didn't even bring my tennis shoes with me because I wasn't planning on doing any excursions where I was going to need them. We were, I was packing light on the shoes. So when they told us that, um, I was like, well, <laughs> I'm gonna have to find something to wear. So actually they said you can wear water shoes as long as they're toed, closed toed. Toed closed? <laughs> yeah. Toed, any so, toed closed pair of shoes. So we when we were in well, one of the ports, was it Cozumel? Anyways, one of the ports, <clears throat> our first port stops, I purchased some water shoes for like $14 and that's what I wore. Yes. So anyways. Yeah. And the tour is $95 a person. I think I told you that already for mm -hmm. the larger group. So let's get started and tell you our first stop. Okay. So first, um, we met in the steakhouse um, about 9 a.m. And there was 16 of us. There was us three, us and our son, Matthew. Um, and then there were 13 other people. Yeah, and, and I think so, they were like one big group, like yeah. one large family. So that was cool, but it's sometimes a little bit weird too because they're all together as a group, and then there's the three of us. But they yeah. were they were nice, and and you know we shared yeah. the tour with them real well, and so that went good. So we all met in there, and they kind of that's when they warn you again about the cell phones and the cameras and everything. So then after everyone was there, we got started. Our first stop was the galley. We went to the galley. We got to see um, how. All the room service was prepared. You know, they did the pastries, the so cooking, the foods. Um, they gave us a few samples. Well, hold on. You're leaving one thing out. The, before we even left to go to the galley, we all had to get the security. Oh, we did. We <coughs> did. They, the security is very tight, and these um, 
uh, in this excursion, whether it's just safety, whether it's they don't want you to grab anything while you're on the way, uh, you can't have items in there that are, you know, that could, you know, cause danger, whatever the case is. So um, not yeah, only do we have a, a, a guide or a tour for the, for the, you know, for the tour itself, but we also were escorted by one of the security guys from the right. ship. And um, he had one of those security wands, like yeah. you see in the airport. Got the pat down the yeah. wand. <laughs> and, a, and a couple times we had to go through and he had to wand everyone to make sure you didn't have anything mm -hmm. on you that uh, that you should not have had. Yeah. So, so so don't try to sneak your your cell phone or your camera in your back pocket because they will find it and they'll tell you to leave it behind. Yeah. So anyway, so we started off by getting the security pat down, I guess you might say. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, there wasn't a pat down. I know, it was just that, like a the wand, wand, a wand down. <laughs> so after that, then we went to our first stop was the galley. Like I said, we um, got to see how they did the room service, cooked some of the pastries. Um, and things like that. We got to taste a few little items there. Yeah, that um, was cool. They had some treats out yeah. for us, so that was awesome. Um, then we got to go to the, all the freezers and see where they have they have all the meat separated. They actually separate every kind of meat separately. The beef, the pork, the chicken, the seafood, everything has separate freezers. They're not allowed to put anything, any different meats in the same freezer. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very picky about that. Then we went to the beverage room um, where there was I guess different times a year they're allowed to um, have a certain amount of product on hand sometimes more than others and like during hurricane season they are allowed to have a little bit more on and, and it has something to do with their budget <clears throat> you know I guess they're budgeting well sure I mean you know during hurricane season they run the risk of on occasion having to be out at sea a few days extra so different times of the year they'll stock up and have you know additional product on board and you know they have to change their entire routine to have X amount of you know extra products sitting around right. and that goes for alcohol and food and, and like mm -hmm. Sharon said um, everything is separated they're following you know all the same rules that we'd have anywhere you know um, in the states or however you want to call it um, you know as far as uh, uh, hygiene and you know whatever board of health stuff and 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 you know yeah. food handling you know proper food handling procedures and all that so uh, they are really tight on that kind of stuff. Right. It was really impressive how yeah, clean, they went through neat, and everything this, yes, was organized. It was. Um, and then they also only use metal pallets to put things on. They are not allowed to use wood pallets. Mm -hmm. Things have to be, I think it's six inches up off the ground, you know, per guidelines, um, like health requirements. Yeah, because the wood can, you can, wood can carry whatever, bacteria, mm -hmm. mold, fungus. Right. Um, bugs can get into the wood yeah. stuff like that so it's pretty neat stuff yeah um, all their cardboards recycled so they would have big just um, like all tied up all the all of it all flattened out all the cardboard I mean it's crazy how much cardboard we saw like just all the trash and, <laughs> and I think like and that. that part I think my favorite part of that was the refrigerator where they had all the alcohol <laughs> I really yeah, enjoyed have, that. Yeah, there was but a lot. They, there were no alcohol taste tests, so that was kind of a yeah. bummer. But um, and it, and the funny thing is, it's the last day, but it's like the day before the last day, yeah, the last was, sea day. There was a lot of alcohol, and there's still a lot of alcohol in there. But I can only imagine how much is there on day one yeah. versus you know day six of a seven yeah. day cruise. Now another thing is they are only allowed to dispose of um, vegetables, and not all vegetables, but most of them mm -hmm. um, in the ocean due to eco eco-friendly um, reasons they so nothing else goes overboard but that um, so you know we learned a lot about that during in our first stop in the galley mm -hmm. and that was really interesting and uh, we got to meet some of the people back there sure so. people working and like Sarah said it was a little after nine so it was mm -hmm. after breakfast before lunch mm -hmm. so certainly a slower time otherwise we probably would have got ran over uh, with all yeah. the chaos and hubbub going on yeah. down there so uh, so that was pretty awesome. All right, so where did we, uh, what was our next, next stop? Our next stop is we went to the engine room <clears throat> and that is another, that is one of the, besides the bridge, that is the other area of the ship that is highly under security. It's locked, uh, it's a locked area and we got the wand search again before entering there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a special code they push to get in and everything. Yep, we had to get buzzed in. They, um, that's where they, they pretty much control everything on the ship from there, from like, they have monitors there, cameras, they can see everything around the ship. So if you're somewhere trying to sneak and do something, even maybe on a balcony, on a, um, on one of those decks or somewhere, you know, you can almost be sure that one of those cameras in that control room. Well, I mean, that's, <laughs> and that's where they see everything. So. They, they monitor 
you know, there's a little bit of security going on in there and they're keeping on um, how everything's operating, all, all the stuff below deck, um, engines, water. Yeah, um, the water. That's where they know. control all the water there and um, all the mechanical operations of the entire ship. They, sure. they monitor the drinking water where the drinking water is all brought in versus um, the w water used for other things that they treat there. All that's mm -hmm. monitored and, and... Yeah, so it's like a main control room. Yeah. And that place was awesome. Yeah, it was. It was I think really... the only thing I... For as far as the tour goes, the only thing I might critique in there was the guy... We met a couple guys who told us all about it. They were tremendous. They shared a lot of information. But, you know, all the guys in there are foreign. You know, most <laughs> all of these people working on the ship are yeah. from other countries. And one of the guys explained it to us. It was just a little bit hard to understand some of the stuff, so I'm trying to pay it a little extra attention. And um, uh, uh, I think that was the only thing that would have been a little better because there's so much interesting information there. I would have loved to to get a little bit more out of him. Um, but he was, you know, he was trying to explain everything the best he could. So, yeah. uh, so very interesting part of the ship. Yeah. Okay. Next, we went on down to the lower levels where the staff hang out, and we got to see the staff dining and entertainment. Um, their dining area and their area down is on deck zero down there. Some of the newer staff actually practice practice serving the, you know, regular staff their meals, and that's how they learn. And you know, when they're sure. in their training, how mm -hmm. to do that. So. They work down there first and get the hang of things, and then they get to come up and actually serve us eventually. Um, they have their own dining room. They have a, um, like three, I think, different ones down there for the <clears> staff <throat> mm -hmm. because certain levels of staff eat in different dining rooms. Like some of the officers kind of have their own dining room yes. down there and things like that. So um, anyways, it's open for all meals. They also have a couple hours for like late night for the night workers that they can um, come in and eat as well. They also have 24-hour drink machine and ice cream machines just like us down there, mm -hmm. <laughs> like the guests. Um, they also have a room for entertainment where they have a big screen TV like Xbox, PlayStation, pool table, foosball. Um, they have music. They even have their own bar down there. Um, they do have to purchase their alcoholic drinks, though, although they are oh, yeah. um, quite a bit cheaper than ours. There was a yeah. sign up there, and so they do you know pay like probably sure they pay. half or less mm -hmm. than what we pay but you know they don't drink all the time there it's yeah. just on off duty so yeah i don't think anybody's going there getting hammered or anything like that but it's their <laughs> it's their social time yeah where they can hang out socially and interact and um for those uh, who aren't allowed to go up um into the upper decks and 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 mingle in with uh you know where the where the customers are yeah. um you know those folks stay down below and they got their own little party place right now they also have an area down on I think it was deck five I guess outside in the front of the ship there and it's where there's they have their own lounge chairs they on the breeze they had two jacuzzis some of the other ships I think I've noticed look down there before and they just have one or mm -hmm. just sometimes just lounge chairs I think but anyways that is for the staff where they can lay out and kind of have their time to just hang out and get some sun go in the jacuzzi or whatever but they're only allowed to do that on port days so. Yeah. If you ever want to kind of sneak a peek at the staff down there having fun, you know, you got to look down there on poor days. Yeah, I mean, if you've ever been in the front of the ship and looking out kind of like in your, uh, you know, Titanic mode, <laughs> yeah. um, usually you can see down and you'll see an open deck with, the, like Sharon said, with the jacuzzi mm -hmm. and some chairs. And that's uh, the hangout yeah. area for the for the staff. And then another thing is uh, most of the staff, their um, cabins, a lot of them share a cabin. But in fact, most of them do share a cabin, but they're down on deck zero as well. There are a few staff members, such as like some of the officers and some of the kind of more upper, I guess, staff. <laughs> um, they have cabins uh, towards the front of the ship on deck six, seven, and eight. So there are a few staff members that have some of those cabins up there as well. Yes. So. So behave yourself if yeah. you're in the front of the ship. Yeah, you might be. <laughs> you might be by a staff member. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to piss off uh, the captain if you're trying to get a good night's sleep or something. Anyway, so next we went to the staff training room, and that was pretty cool. They have their own little area where there's computers, books, things where they can learn, like, just about every language. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, um, It's kind of like a big uh, human resource yeah. area, really, right. where, they, where they can do. They go through all the hiring processes uh -huh. all there, and, uh, you know, you know, they'll have a, 
uh, just a lot of educational stuff as far as their job and what they do and, and how to do it. And, and I really uh, encourage them to learn and to take classes and do things there mm -hmm. as well. Sure. Um, and there's also some like games and things they can play there in their downtime if they yeah. want to. I mean, one of the things I remember they talked about was, you know, how does someone, you know, move up through the ranks mm -hmm. or how do you cross train to get into a different position on the ship? And that's uh, one of the places where you can do that kind of stuff. So if someone comes on board, you know, working the laundry, you know, but they want to work up to a different area, you know, that can be done. They can, mm -hmm. they can learn and, and cross train and just like any other job, you know, if you're in a hotel environment or hospitality, you know, same type of setup. Yeah. So we learned a lot there too. That was a fun little room. And I think we even got a lollipop in there. <laughs> well, yeah. Matthew was there. They had some like little game things in there and we had to kind of lasso him in a little. Yeah. He was starting to get a little uh, antsy at that point. Anyway, so the next area we went to was the loading and unloading area and yeah. storage room. It's kind of like uh, the central part of the ship. And if you if you go on a cruise and you look over the side, you'll see, um, uh, you know, all the forklifts coming in and out, you know, with with product and, and all the resources and, yeah, and, and the luggage, uh, you know, crates and all that. And that's where they're going in and out of. And that's yeah. like the, the central thoroughfare yeah. of coming in, doing a lot of stuff and then going to the front and the back of the ship. Uh, as well right. and that's where they also store like the luggage carts and some of those bigger things as when we're sailing all that gets stored down there mm -hmm. along with there's actually a welding room down there um where like they can bring things in if they need to be fixed yeah. and they do like all kinds of general maintenance down there on things they do mm -hmm. they do so many things on board that you know you wouldn't even realize you well, they're, kind of, they're pretty self-sufficient yeah, i mean they can... anything they have to do you know, everything's done on the ship. Yeah. I mean, so in a rare always... case, they have to send out for something or get a part sent in, but they really have all that stuff there. Yeah. And, um, and the fact that there's, uh, uh, it's like their own little city. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's very, very self-sufficient. They can really mm -hmm. do a lot there. Next, we went to, this was, I don't know if it was my favorite room, but it, I thought it was really cool. It's one of my favorites, the laundry room. This, they do some amazing things in there. Boy, yes. I wish I had some of that in my house. Okay, so they have these huge, huge washing machines and they're sectioned into like three sections, some of them. So they can wash like all these different things at once. And you know, then the, this was the coolest thing ever. They have these machines. They're just like huge machines, as big as like a big king flat sheet for your bed. They flatten it out. It takes two guys, one on each side. They lay the sheet in there the flat sheet in wet right out of the washing machine mm -hmm. it goes through the machine comes out the other side dried completely dried and folded yeah so i think it's like it's, <laughs> it's like, crazy it's like it's heated it's quick dried so it's kind of like sanitized yeah and um you know and that's out of, after being cleaned yeah and then so yeah and then the thing like, comes out of one little slot on the side and folded yeah you know as that's big as crazy. uh you know like you're like your towel at home. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. I think they had two of those on yeah, the ship. Yeah, they did. They had two of them. And they were just, they had just piles of wet sheets there. And they're just constantly putting putting them in there, folding them. Fold. I mean, yep. it's just like a constant Two thing. people just doing crazy. it like factory line. Um, they also have like some pressing stations. Um, they have a seamstress on board. And they said they do do alterations if you need them. I think there's probably a fee involved in that. Oh, yeah. But they're able to do some alterations. And there's a separate area for all the... Um, officers' uniforms, where they press those and keep them, they're just all hanging nice and neat in there. So, yep. Um, yeah, so the officers just drop off their laundry and they get it cleaned mm -hmm. up. I think most of, most everyone there, mm -hmm. you know, does that. So, yeah. uh, so anyway, so that was very interesting. The laundry was really, really cool. I wish yes. I had some of that at my house. <laughs> so, next we went to the theater. We got to see all behind the scenes of how they. Um, kind of run the shows, how they get ready, the dressing yeah. rooms, all that. Um, one thing is, which you don't notice from the audience, is the stage has all these little um, drawn lines all over it in different colors for different shows that they do where they're supposed to be standing. And when you're sitting in the audience, you don't even see those lines. But when you're mm -hmm. up there on the stage, you can see yeah, them. Yeah, it's not even just for standing. It's for when props come out yeah, and things like the, that. Yeah. And so uh, you'd be amazed at that, how much stuff is behind the scenes going mm -hmm. on. Uh, on in this small you know relatively yeah. small area and um, how they have to keep things secure everything has to be like you know you can't just roll something off to the side mm -hmm. and leave it there it needs to be secure because if that ship starts moving yeah. all of a sudden some big prop comes flying right across the stage and yeah. you know 
And they have um, several, so it's pretty cool. Um, like, I guess you might want to call them like stage hands, but they have several people mm -hmm. behind the scenes helping them get ready. The dressing rooms are all neat and tidy. Each um, entertainer or dancer has their own little area with the mirror in front of them, with their stool, with their makeup. The, all their clothes are lined up for each one neatly in order of how they're going to be putting them on. Um, like everything is just like <clears throat> in such like yeah. Just well, they, and they have, they have one of the guys. one of the lead um, performers came down and talked to us in the dressing room and mm -hmm. was telling us some stuff and told us a little bit of behind the scenes about how you know how the shows are created mm -hmm. and there's a land based company that does it and they really uh, they'll do training you know on on land for for to, mm -hmm. to perform the the show you know at sea and I think they were saying that there was uh, one person was leaving and they were just having a new person come in and they talked about how it can be a little weird for that person coming onto a ship even for the first time and, and learning how to do everything, you know, on a ship versus on land. So, uh, yeah. you know, some, some cool stuff we learned yeah. about, about these performers in the theater. And another thing is that little earphones <clears throat> that they wear. And, you know, you're, a lot of people think it's just so that they're not getting distracted and things like that. But, it, you know, it's also for emergencies. But um, there's times where sometimes in the middle of the show, say if the ship's moving a lot, they have to right in the middle of the show, they may have to change up a little bit of a routine and they will announce it on the earphone so only the dancers hear it and they know to go into a different routine, you know. So mm -hmm. we're sitting in the audience and we don't even realize they're doing that, but they, you know, they're communicating sure. through those and doing that as well as if there was ever a real emergency, emergency on the ship, they would get notified, you know, to stop the show, what to do, yeah. you know, everything. So they're actually used for that for emergency situations and com communicating amongst each yep, other it's cool stuff so um let's see that's about it and then our last i guess our last and final stop was the bridge mm -hmm. was the place everyone wants to go and check out and it is another locked area and we got the little wand down again yes um but we got to go in there and it's amazing how empty the bridge really is there's some little sort of desks set up with computers and things but it's pretty virtually pretty empty oh yeah um there's one area on one side by a desk where there's like a glass um well this it's the same areas on on either side if you've been on the ship and you see how the bridge extends out like 20 feet over the side um and that's where uh when they're pulling into port and they're docking the ship mm -hmm. someone will be stationed there and, yeah there's uh, like a, it's like a glass floor on that mm -hmm. side a little glass floor area and that's where they look down and they're able to monitor how they dock, you know, pull in. Sure, if they're coming in at the right, you know, how close they are and, and um, things, uh, things like that. So, so they um, don't crash. But yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> because this room was so huge yet so empty. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like 25 feet deep front to back, extends all the way from one side to the other of the ship, yet there's, you know, one area dead mm -hmm. center looking out through all the windows, which is an amazing view, by yeah. the way. We're up there. Is. We saw some dolphins. Yeah, where they're yeah. just up there kind of keeping an eye on things because everything's kind of on autopilot. Mm -hmm. And then when they come into port, everyone goes to one side or the other. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty awesome. The captain came up. And what was the one? They had a weird, weird. rule. Um, we got to meet no, the captain. No, no clapping. No clapping. You don't clap on the bridge. No it's applause. A, yeah, it's a, a superstition. And um, the story behind that was, I'm trying to remember it now. It's one person said that they didn't want, they, because of the noise it makes, it could simulate like the sound of a gunshot or something yeah. like that. Um, and I'm not really sure, and the captain didn't talk much about it, but they were very that, adamant uh -huh. in telling us, don't applaud. Don't ever clap before the, after yeah. you know, up on the bridge. Yeah. So, so like when the captain's done talking, you know, a lot of times people want to be, oh, thank you, you know, and they're like, don't, no, don't, don't do it. Yes, that's highly discouraged. It's, yep. it's an old superstition. But uh, but that was pretty cool. The captain's <laughs> been around for a while, and um, he was very cordial. Yes. Uh, talked with everyone, took pictures with everyone. So uh, that was pretty neat. Yeah. So yeah. So that was very interesting going up on the bridge. That was. Good. Then we finished up our tour by going back to the Sapphire Dining Room, and they gave us some little goodie bags, which yes. included one thing. Included was in our super our little cool hat. little hats. <laughs> and there are these little backpacks, and there's some little goodies in it. So some I swag. Will, yeah, so I don't want to spoil it for you. If you Sharon, care, wanted so. to, Sharon wanted to say what it was, and I told her, no, don't tell everybody. Let I want to find show out everyone. On own. But no, no, no. Wow. Maybe you know, if enough people comment and they say, we want to know what was in the bag. Yeah, I, I mean, there, it wasn't a whole lot, but, uh, but I said, you know, people got to find out for themselves when <laughs> they take the tour. I'll tell you. Anyways, 
So we got to when we got back to the dining room. Besides getting our little goodie bags, we received um, a free like a drink. We we had mimosas. They offered us mimosas or like a soft drink. So we had the mimosas. Our son Matthew had a Coke, mm -hmm. and we sat there and just kind of chit chatted and kind of you know after it got our bags and then that was it. We were yeah. off and it was a done deal. It was over. And then we do they do take pictures of you. Um, with the captain and everything and you do get those free included in your tour and they deliver those to your stateroom like later that night or the mm -hmm. next day I can't remember if we got ours that night. I think it was that day. night. But anyways, we got it was pretty quick and we actually got a picture for each one of us So we have like three of all three the, of the same picture three of every picture So we ended up with so like if anybody wants pictures. to buy a picture of us with the captain <laughs> of the breeze uh, We'll give you a good deal. On it. Oh my gosh. So um, but there you go so that was our behind the fun tour. It was a lot of fun. It was very interesting. We learned probably even a lot more than we were able to remember right now. Oh yeah. But it's I will recommend uh, people do it. I would say I would suggest so if you're going to do it, do it on one of the newer ships because I just think you're going to actually enjoy it more. You know, you're going to see a little more um, advanced maybe technology or just it's just gonna well, listen, feel, bigger newer cooler yeah. stuff like that so it's but it's gonna be a I little, think, yeah i mean little either listen either way you go you'll have fun yeah. i think looking back on it, it it wasn't cheap i mean dude i don't even know if we saved any money for matthew being you know younger no no it was but uh, yeah so basically 100 bucks a person um but it was cool yeah. and uh, we learned a lot of something we always wanted to do and so um we recommend it and just make sure get on the ship and get to get there immediately to book it or you will miss out on it yeah don't go to your stateroom first don't go have a drink first nothing mm -hmm. you just gotta go straight one of your to party go there and book it the shore excursion desk and get her book going it right there all right so, so i think that's everything we got so that's okay. our rundown of the behind the fun tour so that's it that's hope our it week. answered some of your questions out there and um uh made you a little more uh, uh understanding of how the deal works mm -hmm. and that's so, all yep that's it so mm -hmm. that's it for our breeze so You'll, we'll be back with another cruise soon, coming up soon. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us for a good 25 minutes here about our tour. Have a great day and happy cruising. Happy cruising. <laughs>